Eh? <laughs> no pressure, yes. <laughs> oh. it's, uh, it really is great to, um, to walk through those doors and feel at home and feel um, a real sense of being amongst friends. Um, which many of you have become and uh, it's a real blessing um, Andrews uh, makes note of the um, friendship between different churches in Luton um, and I do bring greetings from Hope Church to you all uh, I think Tony uh, um, is ministering um, in a few weeks time and uh, we were in a car with our sort of network of churches um, spend a couple of days prayer and fasting um, a few times a year and we were traveling to that together um, during the week and just talking about um, I was coming and then he was coming and what a privilege and a joy it is to actually be able to, to share with you guys and, um, and I think, I think I've said it before, but I think there is a sense of working together in amongst us as churches in Luton that is very special. Um, now while we were at prayer and fasting, on, the, on that morning there'd been, a, um, there'd been a report on the news um, about a new project that's happening um, up around the M1. Um, and it's being called the Gateway to Luton. Um, and one of the guys had heard this and sort of picked Tony out of the out of 300 odd people and said, "I just really felt that was a word for you and and the churches of of Luton." So I um, I wasn't <laughs> intending to say this, but I but I will um, share it with you because I think. It was this sense of working together and our relationship as churches that um, this guy, a um, guy called Dave Devonish, for those of you who know him, was seeing as a real, as saying that's the real gateway to Luton. It's something to do with that networking together and working together as we do and building on that. Um, so... Um, thank you for your prayers for Christine. Um, a couple of months ago, um, Christine suddenly woke up and said to me, oh, I'm going to the doctor's today. I've kind of been getting a little bit of pain in my breast and um, I'm just not sure. So she went to the doctor's to get it checked out and um, breast cancer doesn't normally give you pain so I was sort of thinking oh, it's probably just a cyst that's what the GP thought um, and then uh, we had a horrendous week as um, I suddenly got a tearful wife on the end of the phone saying they found a lump and they're doing a biopsy and I don't know what that means and because I knew exactly what that meant um, so she does have a quite an aggressive um, breast cancer um, but the, the good news is it's contained to a small area. It hasn't spread anywhere. It is curative. Um, so we've got, a, um, we've got six cycles of chemo, um, and Friday will be the third, so we're halfway through. Um, and that will be followed by surgery and radiotherapy. Um, so it's a rough year. Um, it's horrible watching someone you love go through um, that, um, as many of you have experienced, I'm sure. Um, but we are positive um, within it. Um, I, I hadn't known really whether to share it on Facebook or not, and I sort of thought, oh, God. so we didn't for a while, and then we did, and. I'm so glad I did. I've just become aware of so many friends um, around the country who've picked up on this and who are um, praying for us. And we feel buoyed up and, you know, feel the effect of that. So thank you for those of you here who've been, who've been doing that. 
so to Psalm 34, which is where I'm going to base what I'm, the rest of what I'm going to share with you. And um, quite an apt, quite an apt psalm, really. So what I want to do is we've heard we've heard it in the NIV. I'm going to read it to you from two other different versions to start off with, and then I'm going to make some comments. Is that all right? So this next version is um, the English Standard Version, but the anglicised English Standard Version, so it says. Um, and then I'll read it from the message. Um, originally, this psalm was written um, using the Hebrew alphabet. So each line would have corresponded to a letter of the alphabet started off, and that's how it was that's how it was composed. Um, it's an amazing psalm in, in many ways. Um, as, as it goes on, there suddenly comes this prophecy in the middle, of, uh, toward the very end of it. See if you can pick it up. Um, and it's a prophecy that's used um, by the New Testament writers to pick out something that happened to Jesus. Um, so see if you can pick it out I will bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth my soul makes its boast in the Lord let the humble hear and be glad oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps round those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are towards the righteous and his ears towards their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Cheer you up. But the Lord delivers them and delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Affliction will slay the wicked and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. So this next version is the message. So Eugene Peterson. Um, I bless God every chance I get. My lungs expand with his praise. I live and breathe God if things aren't going well hear this 
and be happy. Join me in spreading the news. Together, let's get the word out. God met me more than halfway. He freed me from my anxious fears. Look at him. Give him your warmest smile. Never hide your feelings from him. When I was desperate, I called out. And God got me out of a tight spot. Let me pause there. Many, many years ago, when I met um, Christine, uh, Christine was part of a little house fellowship, and I'd been sent over to work with this house fellowship and um, see whether it would be a um, whether it would be come a church or whether they would come and join our church elsewhere. Um, and I always laugh because the long and the short of it was we shut the group down and they joined the main church, but I married I married the leader's daughter, so that was all right. And Christine's dad is one of the most stubborn men you've ever met in your life. He was absolutely, if he dug his heels in about something, he really did dig them in. Um, and I've been teaching on, on praise and worship one Sunday morning. And, and we'd got to shouting. And, you, you know, shouting's mentioned several times in the Psalms. Well, this really upset Christine's dad. He would never shout. Never. <laughs> Most unbecoming. Not an English thing to do, and there's no way he would be found shouting. Um, okay? So I left it. He went to bed. And the following week, when I met him again, he said, um, I had a dream. I was on an island in the sea and the sea started to come up and suddenly the sea was up to my knees and I thought what's this all about then it was up to my waist and I was getting really frightened in my dream and then the next thing I know it was up to my neck and I suddenly went God <laughs> help <laughs> and God said oh you can shout then <laughs> when I was desperate I called out and God got me out of a tight spot God's angel sets up a circle of protection around us while we pray. Open your mouth and taste. Open your eyes and see how good God is. Blessed are you who run to him. Worship God if you want the best. Worship opens doors to all his goodness. Young lions on the prowl get hungry, but God's seekers are full of God. Come children, listen closely. I'll give you a lesson in God worship. Who out there has a lust for life? Can't wait each day to come upon beauty. Guard your tongue from profanity and no more lying through your teeth. Turn your back on sin. Do something good. Embrace peace. Don't let it get away. God keeps an eye on his friends. His ear pick up every moan and groan. God won't put up with rebels. He'll cull them from the pack. Sounds a bit harsh, doesn't it? But rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Yeah. Interesting. God won't put up with rebels. 
he'll cull them from the pack. Is anyone crying for help? God is listening, ready to rescue you. If your heart is broken, you'll find God right there. If you're kicked in the gut, he'll help you catch your breath. Disciples so often get into trouble. Still, God is there every time. He's your bodyguard, shielding every bone. Not even a finger gets broken. The wicked commit slow suicide. They waste their lives hating the good. God pays for each slave's freedom. No one who runs to him loses out. Great psalm, isn't it? Some brilliant things in here. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. So let me ask you, what does that look like? I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. What does that mean? Am I wandering around 24 hours a day going hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God, praise God, bless God, hallelujah. And the world looks at me as though I've totally lost my marbles, which I probably have. (laughs) What does to extol someone mean? you look it up it means it means to praise but to praise someone's virtues this is not running around um, deliberately using religious language that no one understands this is in your common everyday language tongue and speech bringing God into the conversation telling people how great he is, sharing with people what he's done for you, extolling his virtues. He is good. So picking on nobody in particular, but I could go to Nesta and I could go to Nesta and say, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise you, praise you, glory. <laughs> Doesn't do a lot, does it? But hey, if I go to Nesta and say, hey, that's a great cardigan you've got on this morning. It really suits you. It makes your face glow. That's extolling her. Can you do that with God when you talk to him? Can you do that in your conversation at work and around the place? Yeah? That's praise. So I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Are you afflicted this morning? Uh, Josh chose some great songs to sing and it's so good to see a young man using old and new. Love it. Hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Andrew was starting our meeting off with um, Ephesians 2.22. 
I'm amazed how quickly David starts this from his personal experience and what he's going to do. And very quickly, within three verses, he's brought everybody into it. How's that with you? We're not here just as individuals. We are here as a community. Us. And it's that community in which the Spirit dwells. I love that picture. It's a temple that is being built and rising. And we are that temple. We are the home in which God chooses to dwell. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. I want you to realize you are never alone. You are never alone. God is with you. But more than God, it's, <laughs> how can you have more than God? <laughs> yeah? But the angels encamp around us. Angels are God's messengers sent to act on our behalf. Very real. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Time is fast moving on. Worship, this temple is the home where God speaks. The home of prophecy is worship. And it's amazing how many of the Psalms have prophetic utterances in them that flow out of that place of worship. So what's the prophetic word in Psalm 34 that is picked up in the New Testament by the apostles relating to Jesus? Yeah, not one of his bones were broken. If you go to the cross... Yeah? They went to break his legs, but instead they put a spear in his side instead. <coughs> yeah? But the principle of this here is what I want you to get. When we worship, prophecy flows. It's the home of worship. Well, the Lord will rescue his servants or Back up a bit, Chris. Because the other verse that really called out to me, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. All the way through this psalm, you get this sense of closeness and of God coming alongside As you go into this week, as a community and as individuals, realize he is close and camped around you. If you're crushed, It's God's speciality. He comes right into the heart of that to lift, to encourage, to raise you up, to heal, to mend.
if life is good and we're having a whale of a time he wants to be part of that he wants to be part of the celebration he's not just there when it goes wrong <laughs> he's there when it goes right and he's cheering us on pulling even greater things out of us and may God bless you as you go into this week may you know his presence close to you may you hear his voice speaking to you and may you know his face shining upon you in Jesus name Amen